Alrighty. Today we are doing Path of Champions. Uh, we'll be continuing with Jinx, where we left off, and we'll be going up against Zed, the Master of Shadows. It's a difficulty 3 mission. Um, this is going to be like our second time trying to do this. The last time it went pretty well. Um, we were able to get through Gangplank and Ezreal. We got through Ezreal on the first try. Alright, I think with this, these are all really shitty. Um, I'm going to go with flexible game plan. And we're going into the first battle already. Um, their powers are, their foes, whenever they attack, they have plus one um, attack for each of their attacking units. And they create a return in the foe's hand and recall the foe's weakest ally on turn. Um, this is a fantastic hand. We're keeping it. So when we use Jinx decks... We want to abuse the discard mechanic, especially because after a certain level of Jinx in Path of Champions, um, you get this power. What's the worst that could happen? And when you discard a card, you deal one to the enemy Nexus and one to a random enemy, and that's beautiful. Especially whenever you get Zonite Urchins to discard Jury Rig. So this is an aggressive turn one. Unfortunately, they're able to get a three-cost card every turn, so we're going to have to burn their cards. Since they have the attack token this time, we are going to use Poro Cannon to discard Flame Chompers, which will summon them. And that will also get rid of that card. And now here, instead of dropping the Zonite Urchin, what we want to do is we want to drop down Rocket Porter. It does more damage than me summoning two Daring Poros. They're still very determined to hurt us here. Um, I wasn't expecting them to drop a Shadow Assassin. Thus... Daring Poros was actually the correct play. We'll be straight attacking. It's fairly broken that they could just do that. Um, I am going to make sure that one dies. Otherwise, they could just abuse that mechanic. Or they could use Dragon's Protection on repeat, and that's not something I'm looking forward to. Um, we are going to summon a Daring Poro just so we can deal with the Shadow Assassin. And that's where we'll end the round. Since this is a defensive turn, we want to have things that have high health on this turn. So we'll drop Jinx down. Um, it's kind of... What she has is kind of silly here. So like the Lost Chapter, um, I was not able to really work with. Primarily because we don't have that many spells. Like our only spell right now costs zero. So it's pretty silly. Um, we're going to pass here. We don't need to use the Poro Cannon. Just like last turn, we're going to straight... Straight up attack them. And now we'll drop another rocket porter. Hey, thanks for watching. And um, now we'll drop a boom crew rookie. 
and finish with a Daring Furrow. We have a pretty strong turn here. Um, we don't need to attack her. This won't kill it. And she'll, she'll just go back into their hand. Right now we're taking on the Zed mission and Path of Champions as Jinx. Um, we're going to pass for now. And we will defend with one of the Flame Trumpers. We can sacrifice it. It's fine. Uh, we want to use this. We want to get rid of our Poro Cannon. And we want to end around there. This will give us a strong start. And we should be capable of ending this turn. We're going to attack with everything. And attack immediately. And yep, that will do it. We will be doing two back-to-back -back Legends of Runeterra streams. Um, the stream after this will not be Path of Champions, however. As far as I'm aware. Um, I guess I'll use Called Shot here. So Percival would be okay if we knew that we'd be getting far enough in this. Swain's not bad. Gangplank's pretty nice. I want to try Swain. I haven't, I haven't got to use Swain before. Just in general. Um, There's the Young Witch, and then there's an Item Chest. I like Item Chests. I don't know what the Young Witch does. We have a Fleeting Death Mark. And we have those elite allies. We don't have any elite allies. So it's only going to affect our enemies. I mean, it says so anyways. Hopefully having Swain doesn't screw our early cards. Awesome, we got a really nice turn one. What'd she do? You want to an ally to deal two to the enemy nexus? That's not bad. It's not great, because all of our cards have one health right now. <laughs> but it's not bad. Um, I'm going to drop down rocket border. It's our attack turn. Having quick attack here is nice. Um, we'll attack with the Zana Urchin and Rocket Border. Realistically, I could just attack with Rocket Border if they tried to defend. We'll get rid of the Battlesmith. But I like um, trying to see if I can force them to block. And that trade's worth it for me. Okay. So we don't have anything good to discard here. Um, what we can do is we could just use Pow Pow. Alternatively, we could use some treasure to discard the Imperial Demolitionist. And now with this, we're going to use Poro Cannon to discard Cold Shot. That's what we wanted to happen. They'll choose to attack here. Um... We could use the Sump Dredger to get rid of her. However, I don't think it's really worth it. What I can do is I could also use the Rocket Border, but we don't have a unit with Quick Attack until next turn, or we'll get Jinx. But I think, I think realistically, it's worth us blocking this attack, so we might as well get rid of her too.
We're not going to use our discards immediately. So we'll summon Jinx first. Um, we'll attack with everything here. Even if the Scrap Scuttler trades, it's worth it for us. We want to be abusing the fact that Jinx has lost chapter for us. And next turn, we get to drop Swain down. Perhaps. We're just going to use our spells here to do some damage. This helps with Swain and his level up. Um, yeah. We're going to use Poro Cannon to discard one of our Daring Poros to get some extra damage going. Uh, now that she's damaged, I could use Ravenous Lock on her. This is definitely overkill, but I just want to level up Swain. And not have to worry about their attack turn. It's also nice for us to get an elusive unit out on the board. And here's the Swain's level up. Okay. I don't have much going on here, do I? We're going to attack here anyways, I think. I don't necessarily want to attack with Jinx. I think I should actually hold off on attacking with her. But I do need to make sure, like, so I can Nexus Strike. Unfortunately, that's not what's happening here. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. That should be that. That went extremely well and was completely unintended. Sometimes we just have happy little accents, you know. Um, Aftershock's really nice here. However, this is too. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'd rather go with Death Ray. At least it spawns like fast cards. Alright, let's check out the item chest. This is useful. However, I don't know if I necessarily want it. This is also pretty cool. Um, I guess I'd go with the Sump Treasure between the two of them. Alright, so we have a champion item chest. Um, if we're going to be relying on Swain to get things done, that might be the better option. Um, there's also a Keeper of Masks. I will go with the Blade Twirler. This one's usually pretty difficult, in my opinion. Um, the other missions have you go against it, too. Alright. These are the powers that are in play. We have flexible game plan. Um, what's the worst that could happen? Because we're playing Jinx. And she's past a certain level where you can actually have that power. Um, and then they have the foes attacking units at plus one. 
plus zero. Um, this is because we're going against Zed and Zed's mission in the Path of Champions. And then Flash of Steel will stun the weakest unit. And that's perfectly fine with me. Um, our starting hand is kind of rough. We don't want either of those two cards. Um, they're much later. So unfortunately for us, we didn't get anything great. Our best option is just to play the Scrap Scuttler instead of discarding it. And get that early one damage off. As you can see, we don't have any elusive units to block with. What I can do is I could use a Ravenous Flock to destroy it, but I don't think it's really worth it right now to do that. So I don't plan to. We'll drop the Boom Crew Rookie in preparation for the next turn. And now we'll drop down Rocket Porter. Now, they only have one spell mana, so they could use Return or something like that. However, I'm going to use Ravenous... I uh, can't use Ravenous Flock. Humble. Damn it. Well played, well played. We'll drop another Scrap Scuttler then and attack with these two. I'll get some damage off on their Nexus. Which is what we're looking for. I don't mind trading cards like that. Okay. So they are stunning a lot of our cards. We'll have Flame Trumpers now, though. And we'll get rid of that. So we're doing good. We might as well use Called Shot here. Unfortunately, we did not need another Swain. We'll block with that for now. And we'll drop down to Daring Poros. Okay. So, we'll be dropping down Swain here. And I'll be attacking with him, them, and one of the elusive units. I might as well attack with the Scrap Skiller too, no? Yeah, I'll do that. They take a lot of damage here, it's nice. We just want to get rid of them. Instead of this one, perhaps we should use the one with the Swain attached to it. And we'll skip the block. We wanted to make sure we could kill it. That way, we have the Swain's level up going on. This one should be used for the Blight Twirler itself. Ooh. We we'll use parallel convergence here. I think that's our best option.
fortunately for them to recall uh, the Blade Twirler, they didn't get their bonus damage from the stun passive. I'm just going to drop down the Boom Crew Rookie. If I use Sump Dredger now, it's kind of useless. He only doesn't have any extra effects, so I'm just going to block with him. I'll use Call Shot here. Hopefully we'll get a discard. Unfortunately, that was not the case. Okay, we will be attacking with everything here. Yone is stunned. And that will be that. For now, I'm enjoying the Swain pick. I don't think it's as strong as um, other champions that you could get with Jinx. But it's not bad. I think City Breaker is and isn't worth us having. I might be able to like pump it up massively. Realistically, the Golden Crush bot's probably our best option here. Dragon Chow is completely useless despite being cute. We'll go with the champion item chest here. Um, I'd rather have pickaxe on Jinx. Just buffing her attack even further when she has quick attack. We do have to go against Fiora here. And um, I'm not a huge fan about of going against Fioras in general. So we are going to be relying on getting Pow Pow to get rid of her. When she has a bunch of barriers and tough floating around. The Death Ray came in handy as well. And we got what we need for that. Like the last battle, uh, we were unable to get what we needed. Turn one. And you can see they already have a decent turn two happening here. So Sithra, wherever they attack, is going to be a 3-3. Three, three, and that's going to be a 2-2. Two, two. Um, our Scrap Scholar is not going to be able to survive this either way. I look at things. What I can do is I could use Pow Pow to destroy this. And that at least gives me the chance to block. Ah, she'd be a 4-3. Because of Embrace of Shadows. We're going to use Rocket Porter here. We're going to use Death Ray on Fiora. And we'll draw Jinx next turn. And the reason for this is they don't have any spell mana. They don't have any normal mana. So if I attack with Rocket Porter and they decided to block with Fiora, she'll die. Unfortunately, that was not the case. And now we have the issue of dealing with Fiora. If 
We want to predict again. We'll get Ravenous Flock next turn to be able to deal with her since she is damaged. I'm going to have to eat that. And that's going to be what it is. Alright, we are going to wait to use Ravenous Flock here. We're going to use Boom Crew Rookie. And then Imperial Demolitionist. Okay, and now we want to use Ravenous Flock on her. And that's where we'll end the round. Since we killed the last Fiora, the count thing got reset. We don't have any way whatsoever of killing her this turn. That's very concerning. Hopefully this does the trick, though. Okay. They didn't have a two-cost barrier or anything in hand. That did the trick. Quite literally. Um, we will be attacking with these. I kind of want to leave Swain on the bench here, just so we don't lose him. This way we have a unit advantage for next turn. And we'll get the level up from drinks here. I seen that coming. Unfortunately, we do lose Swain here. All right. This is our attack turn. We could just immediately attack with everyone, or we could use some treasure to discard the Death Ray Mark II. And now we'll drop Rocket Porter. We'll attack with everyone, and that should be that. And it was. This is our second time uh, going against Ed. Fiora is really complicated. She's really hard to deal with for Jinx, since Jinx has a lot of low-cost cards. 
picking Swain here was actually really uh, advantageous to us. So I'm grateful for that. I don't have any other Nightfall cards, so I would never be able to level up Diana. She is still a nice two, like a two cost card though, um, and she does have tough. I could also use Legion Veteran here, and I could use some work to Mac to make Jinx or Swain elusive, which I think I'm in preference of. We have a new card to pick from. Um, we'll use Slow But Steady. We do have uh, the one slow Echo spell that we can use, and it's really useful for us. Our credit cards cost one less. That would be nice to be able to uh, drop both of our Daring Poros from Poro Cannon, as well as Jinx's Super Mega Death Rocket. So we have the those options there. Um, this also doubles our Super Mega Death Rocket, so. I think I'd go with Wild Inspiration just to get a better early lead. But realistically, I'm sure the other one's better. Okay. Um... We either have an item chest to pick from, or just a reward. I don't know what the next one is yet. So this is actually a difficult choice. I'll go with the item chest. Hopefully Asari is easier to deal with than I can figure. As you can see, our hand's kind of trash. We'll get the draw too, at least. Alright, that's not that bad. We still don't have anything to do turn one, though. And that remains the case. They don't either, though. That's nice. Um, Yeah, I don't plan on summoning Flame Trumpers. It's our attack turn two, so we could just skip. It is their attack token card. Bleh. It's our attack turn. What I can do is I could use a some treasure. It has a fermial, so I'll get two of them. I'd be able to take out two blocks. And I could use the death ray to maybe do something as well. Yeah, I think that's the best option that we have here. Actually, we'll just use the Ephemeral unit to block that one, and then we'll use the Death Ray on that. And we can use Sump Works map on our Sump Dredger. That's not the worst thing, and if we do that, we'd be able to block that. Or we could just eat the two damage. I say we just eat the two damage. Um... Hmm. Another sump treasure would be nice since our t next turn's an attack. We want to pass. Two sump treasures is worth more than drinks at this current state. And now our Sump Treasure is elusive and has Challenger. What we can do is we could challenge a Shadow Assassin or the uh, Brigand. But I think they'll be attacking us anyways. So we're just going to attack with everything and force them to block. No matter what, they take a lot of damage from it. 
and still gives us unit advantage, which is what we love. The death rate counts as a created card. That's something else to keep in mind. So now, we could do something kind of fun. We could drop down to Sump Dredger and discard one of our Crush Bots since we don't really plan on using it to get that one damage off. And now this is going to deal 3 to a unit. We're going to deal 3 to that just so we don't have to worry about it. And we'll block with the Ephemeral and call it a day. While that is overkill, we want to protect the Sump Dredger that does have Elusive this turn. And now with this, we'll use the Zonate Urchin to discard the Gold Crush Bot, which will get rid of that. Um, as you know, we're going to discard this for that. And now these cards are free. Next turn, we start with the attack token. Um, we can immediately attack, or we can use Jinx here. I'm going to grant her elusive. So I have two options here. I can use Death Ray to destroy her. And I'll have to worry about blocking or anything like that. And this will also give me the predict. And call shot's pretty nice for the next turn. So we'll do that. And we have enough damage to end here too. We did not need Jinx's level up to be able to beat this. Which is nice. Um, we didn't draw a Swain at all. We didn't have that many Noxus cards in general to draw. So, the funny thing about doubling dice on Poro Cannon is that the only thing it does is has a 50% chance of credit copy in hand. Um, that's great for discarding more. Flame Choppers with Overwhelm is kind of a meme. It has no damage. We don't have any way of buffing it. Uh, Sump, works, Sump Works map um, will have double Elixir of Skill. So what's nice about that is we draw two. Realistically, we could use a reroll here. I don't think it's worth it. I'd rather just go with doubling dice to get an extra discard with a 50% chance of actually happening. Um, we could have a free Ravenous Flock, which is pretty cool. Or we could have a, an Ephemeral Zonnet Urchin. I'd rather go with a free Ravenous Flock here. Now we have a card shop. Okay, so we do not need the Spirit Stone on uh, Shiraza. It's kind of useless for us. Um... Shadow Flare is really bad. Onslaught of Shadows is kind of maybe okay at most. Like, all these cards are rough. We're just going to reroll. Boom Baboon is nice. I like that. We can use that. Um, concurrent timelines is just okay. Like, I kind of want it, but at the same time, I really don't. Because we actually 
rely on our followers to do specific things. And we'll reroll. So now we have the chance of using Subpercible. I think that's one of our best options here. I mean, the Plunder 3 cost. Um, this will cost 1. And when drawn, it'd be free. If I plunder, and it deals 3 to a unit. That's actually pretty cool. We'll take one of those. And we will take... I don't know if I should take Subpercival or not. I don't think I will. It's too expensive for now. I'll use our last reroll, though. We don't have any other elites. If we did, that would be really, really fun to use. Icequake's kind of rough. Since Swain does that anyways. Whenever we get a Nexus Strike off. This is kind of funny because there already is a Fermiel. Um, we'll go with a Ballistic Bot. Those are actually nice. And we'll call it a day there. Alright, on to the next battle. Okay, so this hand is kind of fairly okay. Hopefully it gets a little bit better. It did not. We can't do anything turn one. We can now, though. We could use a death ray on Sithra. Having Boom Baboon there is nice. And we can get rid of Sithra with Ravenous Flock immediately. I don't think this is actually worth it. I'm just going to end the round. I'll eat the two damage. I don't mind. Wait, what? Oh, no. I see the problem here. <laughs> um. Hmm. Yeah, I should have actually destroyed her. That is a firm my bad. Yeah. So. This is going to be a weird turn. Alright, it does have tough. So, even if I use death ray, it wouldn't work. The way I want it to. I guess we'll use boom by boom here. That's perfectly cool with me. Now we, we'll have to use ravenous flock to get rid of her. Get Swain a little closer to leveling up, which is nice. That's what we're going for. Uh, we have enough damage here to get rid of this one. The next turn is an attack turns for us. Uh, 
Oh boy. So if we block that, that would have been really preferred. Unfortunately, this is now bugged. And now we have to deal with Sithra the Bold. This turn is going to be defensive. We're not going to be attacking. I don't think there's a great attack here. Because if I attack with flame, with a rocket border, she, Sithra the Bold takes damage, and they get a stronger Sithra. It's a really inconvenient thing. I mean, I guess I could use Sump Works map to make the rocket border elusive. But I don't think that's worth it. Oh boy. We'll use Swain here. They still have a lot going on. We'll make Swain elusive for now. And drop flame trumpers. And we'll you never never mind. We will not be using flame trumpers to do anything here. Because they gave it themselves fearsome. We're gonna sacrifice the Zonite Urchin. Actually, we don't need to. We could actually block her with the flame trumpers. And her barrier is useless, her tough is useless. Flame trumpers doesn't hurt anything. Um, we will use Swain to block her, and we will be using Rocket Border and losing him as well. And that is what I was worried about. This is looking fairly gruesome. I'm not going to lie. Our best option here, I believe, is to use the sump bot. And now we could try to get rid of the other Sithra. So that's going to do two to it. This is going to do 1 to it. And that's going to do 4. They only have one card in hand. And the beauty of this is I could attack with this Swain and not have anything to worry about. Unfortunately, we don't get to use the Ephermial. That is correct. We could attack with all these cards, but they're going to get the next Sithra, and the next Sithra is even stronger than this one. I can at least whittle it down. Oh, yeah. Ravenous Flock here is useful. Oh no. Okay, well, I found the other use for Ravenous Flock. I might as well use this on her. Oops, I keep challenging the wrong one. <laughs> yeah, we want to attack like this. That way the sump dredger will actually get rid of her. 
She doesn't take any damage. Of course, she just happens to have more of these normally. Right now, the odds of us winning are very slim, but never zero. I might as well attack with Jinx here. If I'm attacking with Jinx, I might as well attack with everyone. The other ones basically already are the highest Sithra. They win next turn. No matter what I block here, I can't do anything. So that's the end of this run. Uh, we were fortunate enough to get through Fiora. And we found out that Swain's actually pretty good with Jinx. Um, and they balance each other out in the sense of card costs. But that doesn't happen until you get the level where you get Jinx's power. That's a nice amount of reputation. Reputation is what levels of champions. Cool. So in terms of relic items, I got one for destroying Ezreal and one for destroying um, Gangplank. We didn't get anything really useful here. The best thing we got was Lost Chapter. The other thing's Storm Razor, which is completely, um, completely useless because we already have Quick Attack, and uh, it does not work like you'd imagine and give us double attack. Okay, we'll try this again. Grit is nice, however, with Jinx, all of her cards have a higher attack for the most part. I mean, there's like a few that don't, but yeah. Empire's Deus is nice. Chrono Break is okay. I think I'll go with Chrono Break here. Okay. Um, our turn two is strong. Our turn one's okay. We don't need Pow Pow here, I don't think. We have a defensive turn one. What I mean by defensive is we'll only be doing two damage rather than three. If we could get a Rift Scuttler. We might as well just attack with the Zonite Urchin. If they trade here, it's fine. This happened last time, too.
So our Boom Crew rookies have Spell Shield. That's cool. Nothing crazy with that. It's not great. It's not bad. We might as well just uh, drop another Boom Crew rookie down. That's cheeky. I'll just block with the flame trumpers. I'll get rid of Chrono Break. I'll use Poro Cannon here. This way I don't have anything to worry about blocking me. We got a nice amount of Nexus damage off there. That's what we like to see. Okay, we have a few options here. So, our Boom Crew rookies can block him. And that would be, that would be pretty cool. We could also use Rocket Porter and two Darren Poros and then summon Jinx next turn. So unfortunately right now we'd have to be using Zonit Urchin um, because it's a better trade for us. The Boom Crew rookies do more damage to the Nexus. Just like I said, I wanted to drop down Jinx that round. We'll attack with everything here. I don't have much to lose anyways. Oh, we should be able to win next turn. Holy hell. Well, I see what they're pumping up. Okay. I guess I'll just sacrifice one of the Darren Poros. Since Rocket Porter has Quick Attack, next turn it'll be able to get rid of it. Alright, um, we have an option here. I might as well use Rocket Porters. We could hold off on the Poro Cannon. We don't need to do one damage to it right now, and it returns the hand. We attack immediately, can't do anything. We have two Boom Crew Rookies, we win anyways. Yay! Doesn't even matter. Shits and giggles, we'll get rid of Jinx. Okay. And we won the first battle of the run. Hopefully we'll get to Fiora this time too. Oh boy, that's a lot of high cost cards. Um, I don't have any way of getting deep. So, unless it's going to give me Nautilus or Maokai or something like that, I don't want Sea Scarab. Now, this is kind of trash. However, I could buff this to make this not trash. I'm just going to reroll though. I think that's our best option. And I'll use, I'll just take the assembly bot. That's fine with me. So 
So it's fortunate for us that we did not take um, the Sea Scarab. We would not have any way of doing what we needed to. Vladimir is kind of counterintuitive with Jinx, especially when most of our cause most of our cards have one health. Uh, most of the strong cards, anyways. LeBlanc is nice. We could be we could use LeBlanc. We can and can't use Hecarim right now. LeBlanc's not the worst option here. Um, so our options is Gold Chest or Inspiring Mentor. I would much rather have the Inspiring Mentor than the Gold Chest. We don't need it. Its power revolves around elites. Uh, our starting hand is complete trash, though. But that's okay. I want to keep the LeBlanc. LeBlanc's really strong. She's just like a better Jinx. For being one cost less and only trading off... The only trade off is health. She technically has more damage. Because Jinx has her item. Sithra dinks us here for three damage. But there's nothing we could do about that. We got unlucky, unlucky with the hands. Our best option and only option is to drop down the rocket border. And that is the only thing that makes sense to do. We're just going to attack immediately. Rocket border attacks whoever. We do not have any discards. We can use Pow Pow here to get rid of him. And I guess I could use Pearl Cannon to get rid of one of the LeBlancs. And thus I have more to block with. If he attacks, I'll just block with that. That way I don't have to worry about the Rocket Porter. As I've said, I'd much rather have LeBlanc than Jinx. That's perfectly fine with me. We attack with all these. Just they have to choose whether or not they block. They decided not to. We got some free damage off. I could use Bloody Business right now to get rid of that card right now. We almost have LeBlanc level up. Unfortunately, they do trade. I don't think that there was a better option there for us to work with. We might as well use Jinx now. We could use Bloody Business here to pick apart Sithra. We can attack with all three here. I think the better option was for us to save the Scrap Scuttler and make them block. Some Treasure gets rid of Zonite Urchin. We get the level up from Jinx. Um, I'll just use some Treasure here. We lose Jinx. There's 
We pretty much lose everyone here regardless. Yeah, we do. Whatever. I'd rather clear the board than worry about taking damage this early on. They have a card advantage, so we're really at the whim of luck here. It is our attack turn, though, so we could just pass. Oof. The best thing I could do is use Thorn of the Rose to block and destroy the cavalry. Uh, I don't need to use Kyle here. There's no use. There's no point. I'll drop Jinx down. Um, it doesn't matter which enemy we stun. It's the same difference. The reason why we want to stun an enemy here is to get the super mega death rocket. Yeah, we'll attack with drinks here first. We get rid of whatever card she goes against. Okay. Chrono Break is completely useless here. And that's that. It is unfortunate that we did lose a lot of health off that. However, we were still able to make it through, and that's the good thing. At most, I choose Flurry of Fists to give Jinx double attack. If I'm capable of buffing that in a store, that'd be huge. And I might as well buy three reroll tokens here. Um, we have the option of a spell chest, a card shop, and an item chest. We'll go take on the Sift, S Swift Wing Flight rather than the Blade Twirler this time around. Hopefully, this yields us better luck. Our first hand sucks. We have too much high cost. Too many high cost cards going on. Our hand still sucks. At most, we could just drop down Jury Rig. And attack with it. That's the best we could do turn one. Okay. We could use Pow Pow, but it's kind of stupid. We lose both of our cards here. They should have used their Scout passive. However, the AI is not smart enough to do that for whatever reason. Which I am perfectly cool with. 
Uh, we have a few options here. So Thorn of the Rose doesn't have quick attack. I don't plan on attacking with her. However, I could drop her down. Assembly bot is useful for our next possible few turns. We are not attacking here. We're just going to pass. We drop Jinx. Ooh. We don't have to drop Jinx on. We could actually use Pow Pow on this. Yeah, I think that would be the best option here. And now we just drop down to Rocket Border. Unfortunately, they did make use of their Scout Passive this time around. And we are taking a fair beating here. We'll use Jinx. And whenever we summon Jinx, we can actually use Chrono Break if she dies. We'll attack with both of these. I could just use Corona Break here to get Rally and do it again. It wasn't as useful. We only used it for the Rally. But we were able to kind of thin, maybe kind of thin out the board a little tiny bit. I'd rather have Thorn of the Rose here. And get to stun. Unfortunately, now they're thinking about using their scout passive. Pretty much all their units have scout, so I don't get to pick. Do I block? And we lost. I want to say the biggest problem with that run is that we couldn't get any of our early cards. Like, we couldn't get Poro Cannon, we couldn't get Jerry Rig that much, we couldn't get Zonate Urchin. And thus, we were kind of left with the mess that we were given. Um, we are 80% of the way to this level. So we get, we'd earn an additional 10% gold. We'll be trying this again. Okay, once more, grid is useless. Flexible game plan is actually not bad. I'll go with flexible game plan here. We got pretty far with it the last time. It gives us a chance to draw our low-cost cards and have the early turn advantage. And have uh, control of the board. Um, yeah, this is actually not that bad. So, this time, Jury Rig has... Poro snacks on it, which means it's actually just better to use this rather than to use Poro Cannon to summon it and then drop another Poro down because there's a chance that's going to summon a nicer Poro, and thus it did. Um, there's no other discard mechanics in this hand, so we're just going to attack with those two.
Our best option here is probably just to drop down the Boom Crew Rookie. I don't think there's a good option here in terms of what we decide to block with. But we definitely do not want to take the 6 damage from Scouts of the Dragon there. Okay, we now have a discard mechanic card. We get a little bit of damage off. And we'll also summon a Sump Dredger by discarding maybe the drinks. We have a spare drinks anyways. Um, I think I'll just attack with some treasure here. We'll trade one for one. I had to think about it for a second, and realistically, if I just, like, let Green Glide do whatever, um, I think it'd be better off. There's no point in us dropping drinks here, because they'll just take it. We'll drop a Daring Poro down as fodder. Now we'll use Pow Pow to get rid of one of these. Block the Daring Poro. Okay. Uh, we have the option of using Daring Poro or Poro Fly. We'll drop another Daring Poro down. Um, this is beneficial for us and more offensive. Unfortunately, they have a ton of dragon protection in their hand. So I need to be very careful what I do. Dragon protection is a two cost card. It's a slow card. Um, I'm going just to attack with Jinx and the Daring Pro here. I don't have to worry about them summoning the Everglade, uh, Green Glade Lookout, rather. Their hand is also too full, fortunately for us. We're just going to be dropping cards down here. We know what the majority of their hand is aside from two cards. So it, it doesn't really bother me any. They don't have any spell mana. So what I can do is I can just get rid of the one that has low health. And drop a Poro Fly down. Um, doing so, I'll be getting rid of one of the Flame Trumpers. And I'll block with one of the Flame Trumpers. Now, yes, I could have attacked Jinx. However, it's just going to get recalled back in hand, so all the buffing that did to that card is completely useless now. We attack with everything here. That does not end the game, but it gets us pretty close. We got the level up from Jinx. We have two Daring Poros here. I'm just going to summon both of them and get rid of units. This, realistically, isn't a good thing for us to do. But we want to get the Super Mega Death Rocket out. And 
and we win using a discard mechanic. That took a long time. I didn't enjoy how long that took. That's supposed to be fairly fast, too. Hey, it is what it is. You know? These are all good options. I like Jace. I also like the Puff Cat Peddler. I think that's a really good card, actually. For Jinx. But I, I am going to go with Jace here. So we have Katarina, Kindred, and Riven. Um, realistically, I think Kindred is too high of a cost for us to work with. Katarina is useful. However, we don't have, like, much to really abuse her with. Riven's just okay. So we already have Quick Attack on Jinx. So to the Blade Fragments, like, one of the Blade Fragments and the whole Blade itself is completely worthless. And the only point of it is to um, level up Riven. The other two supporting cards with Kindred's also bad. Um, Katarina is an early thing. I'm going to actually just reroll that. I didn't like any of the cards there. Now Scion kind of actually works well with Jinx, which is ironic in a lot of ways. I think I'd actually just go with Scion here. Uh, we have a gold chest once more. We have an item chest. We're going to go back to the Battlesmith and try to get that item chest. I feel like gold chests have diminished values uh, once you get to like certain levels. Uh, it might also depend on the champion that you play too and what the deck has. Our turn one sucks. We're getting rid of all the costs, all the cards except the Poro Cannon. Um, we have an offensive turn one. Yeah, Sion works perfectly with Jinx in tandem. Since he works around discard mechanics. It's really useful for us. We could wait for Reborn Grenadier. Um, and we can use him to discard... Our flame trumpers, which will summon our flame trumpers. Alternatively, we could drop a rocket border down. And now we either take six damage here, or we at least take down the blacksmith. And I'll block Sithra with the scrap scuttler, I suppose. It's a net negative trade. However, it's worth to get rid of the blacksmith. Okay. Now I could use a reborn grenadier to get rid of the flame trompers. And now we are going to attack with all three of them. We're actually not going to challenge using the flame trompers. We want to see if they'll block the Reborn Grenadier. They have not. Um, and now we'll drop down to Boom Crew Rookie. We have Jace and we have Jinx. 
they have a 4-4, so I don't want to drop either of them just yet. Instead, I want to drop the Boom Crew Rookie. They have multiple challenging cards. Thus, we'll divvy things like this. And I'll drop down to Daring Poro. So I could also discard Scion, which is pretty cool. Um, I don't have a way of leveling up Jace right now, so me dropping Jinx down here is worth it. And now we can just attack with... Hmm. Actually, I'm going to use the Zonate Urchin to discard Scion as well. And now we want to attack with everyone except the Urchin. They have decided not to block whatsoever. They drop down Sithra the Bold. And now this gives us a big problem to worry about. And I don't have a solution to that issue. If I use Roar the Slayer here, it's going to get rid of their Sithra of Cloudfield, which is completely useless. Considering we're using a 3-cost spell to get rid of a 1-cost card. Um, Poro Cannon is also obsolete, obsolete here. We can summon down Jace. And it doesn't matter what keyword we give him. But I feel like it's a better option. Okay, right now our hand is fairly rough. It is our attack turn. Um, I'm going to use Pearl Cannon to get rid of the Zonite Urchin. I'm going to use Roar of the Slayer to get rid of one of the Daring Poros. And that will get rid of Sithra. They use Cataclysm on the Daring Poro that we do have on the board. We'll drop down our other Daring Poro. It is our attack turn. We're just going to attack with the Daring Poro. They do not have any elusive units. Right now, this is anyone's match. Which is very unfortunate. And now it's safe to say it's their match. Yeah, there's no way I can do anything here. I can only block one card. That's a disappointing run. We didn't make it very far at all. And we almost have Jinx leveled up though. So we'll we'll try once more. Um and hopefully this will be our last run before we switch over to bubbles. Um it'll be our first time playing Legends of Runeterra. So make sure you watch that. It'll be unlikely that uh, she'll be playing Path of Champions. However, it's never impossible. Okay. 
Um, we are going to get rid of Pow Pow here and Boom Crew Rookie and Jinx. We're only going to leave us with the Flame Trumpers. We got two Daring Poros. Uh, the Daring, the Poro Cannon has Elixir of Skill, which is nice. We'll use both of the Poro Cannons to discard the Flame Trumpers that we do have. Since our last round didn't go as well, we start with two spell mana. I'm going to drop down a Sump Treasure there. And I'm going to block the Scales of the Dragon. As well as the Inspiring Mentor with our two Daring Poros that we do have. And it will get rid of both of them. Which is extremely beneficial for us. Uh, we'll drop down Jinx here. They use Return to get down a Shadow Assassin. And they also use an Inspiring Mentor. Um, yeah, I'm going to use Pow Pow on the Shadow Assassin. And that's going to let us use some Treasure here. And we are also going to use one of the Flame Trompers to challenge Inspiring Mentor. Freeing up our Jinx and some Treasure to attack. They drop down a Coastal Defender. Um, they don't have any more spell mana to do anything with them. However, they did abuse Return. I'm just going to use the Flame Trumpers to block them. I can't block the Elusive Unit. So I'll be taking two damage here. Um, we will be dropping down the Boom Crew Rookie, as well as the Daring Poro, and we'll end the round there. We now have a Sump Treasure to play. We're also going to use a Boom Crew Rookie to get rid of a Daring Poro. This will do more Nexus damage to them. We have en enough units on the field to be able to win regardless. And we have indeed won. We took three damage from the first fight, which is uh, kind of scuffed, but it's not entirely lost just yet. It's only three damage. Okay, so we could choose Vi here. And now we get get into the reinforcements. Um, we could choose Lucian here. Sejuani's not that bad. Sejuani helps um, since we have the discard level up from Jinx. And they fill in nicely for our later turns. Alternatively, we could use Lucian here too.
So I want to use Sejuani and try to abuse that discard mechanic. This time, um, we're going against the Rain Shadow Blade. There isn't an item chest waiting for us behind the Elite um, fight that we'd have to take on otherwise. Thus, it is not worth it. I'm not going to sacrifice the run over spells. Our turn one sucks. We did pick Sejuani. We kind of expect this. However, since our last run also sucked, we get an additional mana. So we could summon our Ruthless Raider, turn one. And now we'll drop down a Rocket Border. We'll use Zonite Urchin to discard Flame Trompers, which summons it. We have a lot going on here. Alright, so we're going to attack with the Rocket Border. We're going to attack with the Raider. We're going to attack with the Urchin. And we're going to use the Flame Trompers to challenge the Keeper of Masks. Which is going to let us do a whopping 8 damage. We'll be using Pow Pow. And that's the only thing we'll be able to do this turn. Realistically, I guess us using Jinx was the smarter option here. Since she'll refill our spell mana. But it's okay, because we cleared their board anyways, and we still have unit advantage. It's perfectly fine with me. So we have options here. We have a few options here, in fact. So I can attack immediately, do 6 damage, drop Jinx down, refill our spell, refill our spell mana, which is completely useless. Um, and that would help our Vi get stronger. I could also drop down a Ruthless Raider and some treasure. And that would be a 7 damage option. I think I'd much rather have the 7 damage option. So we want to attack with our Rocket Border here. And we'll only be doing that. That way if they decided to defend. They will be trading a unit. So now with the cards that they do have. Um, we're, going, we're going to be dropping down Sejuani. And we're going to give their quick attack. Rain Shadow Blade. Frostbite. And we're just going to pass there. So, they are giving Sejuani a Fermule here, which is unfortunate. We're going to use her to block then. Um, we don't have the greatest... We don't have any good options to deal with the Stirred Spirits. Our best option is to sacrifice a Ruthless Raider here. I suppose that's what we'll do. Okay. Um, realistically, we could use a Jury Rig. We don't need to. We don't have enough damage just yet to be able to end. However, we do now. We want to attack with everything here and overwhelm them.
And we have one. Okay. So we could use this Sump Snipe Scavenger, or we could just reroll. Yeah, I think I'll just go with the Sump Snipe Scavenger. There's a chance that we get the Allegiance, because we do have Eye and stuff. Um, we are going to buy three reroll tokens for 80 gold. And now we're against the Silent Shadow Seer. So, when a unit dies, grant a random unit in that player's hand 1-1. One, one. Is there power? Which is okay with us. That doesn't bother me any. It benefits me as well. Our first turn. Our hand is really rough. Uh, we'll be keeping Rocket Porter. And we will be summoning the rocket border. And attacking with it as well. So they're going to keep summoning Shadow Fiends. All we have to do is block. So I'm going to drop down a Boom Crew Rookie to block with. Their units are just going to progressively get stronger and stronger. We want to attack with Rocket Border straight away. Now we want to drop down our Ruthless Raider and our Boom Crew Rookie. And we'll end the turn there. We want to use a Poro Cannon to discard a Poro Cannon. In doing so, we now have something to block Silent Shadows here with. They did summon two of them, and we'll summon two Daring Poros as well. Now, by blocking these, they don't get the Nexus Strike off, so they don't create any more copies, uh, which is extremely useful for us. And now, the only thing we have to worry about is Keeper of the Masks. Now, with Keeper of the Masks, it's a 5-4. What we can do is we can block with Ruthless Raider, and um, we'll try some damage. And now our Ruthless Raider that we have in hand is a 6-4 card, because we did lose a lot of cards. And next turn we will be able to summon Vi, whom will be able to get our passive off. So we are going to attack with everyone here. We're going to use Vi to challenge the Keeper of the Masks that's stronger. That way we don't lose our rocket border. And we'll attack with this. This will level up by. And 
and we will end the round there. Oh boy. They dropped down the Horns of the Dragon. It's a really strong card. We're going to use Sump Dredger to discard Flame Trompers, which summons it, as we know. We're going to use Pow Pow on this, too. So now it's a 7-7. Seven, seven. Um, we don't have anything that could block with it, so we're just going to use the Flame Trompers. We take 7 damage here. Now we're just going to drop down the Zonite Urchin. We're going to attack with everything here. Vi is the only one with Challenger. We're not going to bother. Um, I think almost no matter who they they decide to block, uh, we'll be able to win. Yeah, that would be the correct way of thinking. Yeah, so we did take some damage here. And that's okay. We were able to win. So I'm just going to uh, take and treat here. Or I could just reroll. I think rerolling is not a bad idea. Um, hmm. I could use the armored tusk rider. It comes with quick strike blade. So it starts with a free attack and is overwhelmed. Enemies with four or less power cannot damage it. So it's just like a better fear. I think that's not a bad option. Alternatively, we could go with a one cost ambush, uh, which is one of the new Piltover cards. It comes with Caitlyn. Um... It gives an ally plus two this round. If I've added two cards to my hand, it also gives elusive. This round as well. So it's two this round specific things to draw two cards. Um, we also have a ton of rerolls still. I want to go with the armored tusk raider. It gives us a chance chance with late stuff. So I could choose between Barrier, Fearsome, and Dragon Tooth with Fury um, with our three champions. Right now, I don't mind re-rolling. Um, we didn't get anything useful off that re-roll. We'll re-roll again. We could use Savage Shield, but there really isn't anything going on still. Um, we can use mana deposit now, which when it's when one of the champions are summoned, it refills by mana equal to its cost. We could do it with Sejuani. I think that's the better option here. The other options are Radiant Plate, which is 4-4, four, four, but costs two more. Um, that really delays things. We don't want anything to be more delayed than they already are. We are forced to go against the Play Twirler here. Um, we still have unstable mana flow. I think for this battle. So our hand is perfectly fine. It's a bunch of two cost cards. I was wrong. We do not get unstable mana flow this round. I'll drop down a rocket porter. That's the only realistic option that we have right now. 
Um, I'll use Dreary Rig to get a Scrap Scuttler, and we'll block one of the Inspiring Mentors with it. We're just going to eat this six damage. This is fairly unfortunate now. So I'll drop a Daring Poro and the Boom Crew Rookie. Actually, with them doing that, I might as well just drop another Daring Poro down. And I'm going to be attacking with both Daring Poros. So they do not have an elusive unit to block with. Thus, it is free. Okay, so we almost have enough spell mana to drop down our Armored Tusk Raider. Um, we currently cannot. Thus, we'll attack with both the Ruthless Raider and the Rocket Porter immediately. They decided not to block, which is perfectly fine with us. We drop down another Ruthless Raider and a Boom Crew Rookie. And we'll end with one spell mana. Or, sorry, two spell mana. So, I could drop down the Armored Tusk Raider here. They use Steel Tempest against it. It's their attack turn, and they decided to end. So I'm just going to let them end. So I, I drew Sejuani. I can't really use Sejuani here. I'm going to attack with everything. And they recall everything, apparently. Ah, so I could use Sejuani for a tree does a spell mana. I could drop the armor tusk raider by replacing one of our ruthless raiders, and that will start with a free attack. So we get a free six damage off. And I think that's pretty good. Alternatively, I could use the Pow Pow to get rid of the Green Glade uh, Elder, which is what I want to do. It's our attack turn. Um, we're going to use Vi, and we will get rid of. Actually, we're just going to let things be. We're going to pass. We don't want to do anything just yet. They recalled our Armored Task Raider, which is ironic because uh, it lets us attack on their turn. We will be taking 5 damage here, which is unfortunate. Um, there's nothing we can do to block it. Our only el elusive unit is being permanently stunned. So, you hate to see it, but we do win.
no matter what they do, we win. Um, because of the Boom Crew rookie. That levels up Sejuani. Leveling up Sejuani is completely useless here. But it's still a cool animation, I think. So we have Troll Gifts with Elixir of Sorcery. That's a really nice thing. Um, the nice thing about that is it will grant an ally regeneration. If they already have it, it grants them plus two, plus two instead. So it will give them regeneration. And then it will be cast onto the same targets to give them that plus two, plus two. That is extremely useful. We'll be going with that. We have an epic card shop. And then we have a gold chest. We want to go for the card shop. Um, our options, we have some okay options here. We could also choose to re-roll. Um, Sump, works, Sump Works Map with Elixir of Sorcery is actually useless. We don't need that. Um, Call of the Wild, the only use for me to have this is the Invoke. Might with Grifter's deck is the only thing worthwhile that I see here. So I'm going to reroll. So we have a few options here as well. These options are actually nice. And this actually provides us with a decision. Um, tall Tales with Plunder. So this is a free Tall Tales. We do not have a Yeti though. Shared Spoils. Uh, grant the top three units in your deck plus one plus one. With Plunder, it draws one of them. When cast, grant the top ally in your deck power and health equal to the cost. So instead of, um, so let's say we plunder, all right, and we get, sh and we use shared spoils after we plunder, uh, we draw the card that's on top of our deck, all right. Our the top unit on our deck gets plus three, plus three, because of ardent sensor on shared spoils. Um, it's a two cost card, that's well worth it. We will be buying that. Um, we can also buy subpersible here. Unfortunately, um, we would not be able to get the plus four, I don't believe. But it comes with bonded bucklers. So whenever it supports something, it will grant its supported ally plus one, plus one, and its keyword for that round. Um, its keyword is elusive. I could also use it to give things regenerate. So I will be taking that. Um, and that's all we have. That's all that we can afford, which is perfectly cool with me. We go into a healer, and now we must deal with Fura. I don't think we'll be able to deal with Fura. However, I'll be happy if we can. All right, so we got a few three cost cards, a so some treasure. We got Troll's Gift and Jury Rig. We'll be replacing the some treasure. We start with our attack turn. We can't do anything aside from use Jury Rig here. So I might as well. And I'll attack with the some, uh, Scrap Scuttler for a free one damage.
we use the scrap scuttler to block Sithra off cloud field and then we drop down a rocket border. We're going to attack with rocket border immediately. And now they drop down to Pura. Um, we were going to use one of our weaker cards, but given what we know now, we aren't going to do that. We're actually going to pass there and let us keep this three spell mana for next turn. So right now, Fiora is a 6-5. What I can do is I could drop down Jinx. Fiora does get tough. And we could use Troll's Gift to give our Rocket Border more attack. However, that's not going to be enough still. Um, I think we're forced to eat the 4 damage. From the Vanguard Bannerman. And let Fiora kill. This way she doesn't have tough. And now this turn. I'll be using Ruthless Raider. Fiora does have Barrier this turn. Um... So that makes it so I really don't want to attack with Jinx. Because Fiora is just going to trade with her instead. I don't want to drop any more low cost cards either. So this is quite the predicament that we have. I'm just going to pass. Fiora gets her level up unless we get Pow Pow. We did not get Pow Pow. Um, we can use the Armored Tusk Rider here, though. <clears throat> and we'll pass and wait for Fiora to challenge someone. We're going to have to use Troll's Gift. On the Ruthless Raider. And it almost kills Fiora. Unfortunately almost is not enough for us here. And we are bound to lose next turn. All right. We can now make our Tusk Raider elusive. So we'll be attacking with it regardless now. And we will also attack with our Scavenger. The only thing that can deal with our Scavenger right now is the Screeching Dragon. Or, well, the Loyal Badger Bear. So, is what it is. Maybe I'll just attack with the Armor Tusk Raider. The issue with Fiora is our deck has a ton of weak cards. Their deck has a ton of cards that buff Fiora. And thus there's no real way of dealing with it. And so we are forced to lose on this turn, and their power is bugged and just constantly spams. No matter what we lost here. Um, we will be leveling up Jinx, and we'll be ending the stream there. Bubbles will be taking over in an hour.
and they will also be playing Runeterra. So feel free to follow us. Feel free to tune in in a bit. Um, feel free to say hi. Check out our YouTube if you want to see more Runeterra stuff or our Twitch. Um, we have the unedited videos on Twitch. And then we have some edited videos of Runeterra on our YouTube channel. Oops. I meant to level drinks up there. Ah, well. Alrighty. Uh, that will be it for us for now. Um, like I said, we'll be returning live in an hour. Um, you'll have a different host this time. And yeah, have fun.